Welcome to the Stories from the NNI podcast. I'm Lisa Friedersdorf, Director of the National Nanotechnology Coordination Office. In this snippet, Scott Van Epps, Assistant Professor of Emergency Medicine at the University of Michigan, describes the specialized equipment that he uses to locate nanoparticles inside cells. Yeah, they sort of come in two different flavors, I suppose. One of them is sort of how we measure things. Microscopy being a huge part of what we do. And we have used almost every microscopy modality I can get my hands on. I'm very thankful that I'm at the University of Michigan and have access to a lot of very specialized microscopes. So that includes relatively traditional transmission and scanning electron microscopy. You know, bacteria are very difficult because of how small they are. And so a lot of the sort of traditional biologic microscopes You don't see a lot of detail until you get to an electron microscope for bacteria. So we do a lot of electron microscopy. We've recently sort of gotten into using a specific scope called the NanoLive microscope, which it finds things by refractive index. And so differences in refractive index show up on the scope. And it's been very helpful in helping us find even smaller nanoparticles within our very small bacteria and helping to localize them specifically. And one of the key questions we're always asking is, where are the nanoparticles? It helps narrow down what they're doing inside of a cell or not inside the cell. So we've been using that. We've had access to things, not so much on visualization, but on trying to understand how a bacteria sort of lives in the presence of a nanoparticle, and particularly its metabolism. And so one of the devices we're using more frequently is called a seahorse, which essentially measures oxygen consumption. And it's a way for us to understand what's happening to the bacteria and and what type of metabolism it's doing when it comes into contact with the nanoparticle. And then we do sort of the more traditional microbiology things like genetics and transcriptomics and using mutants and mutant libraries to better understand how the nanoparticles function within the cells and, and what the mechanisms are. So that's all sort of on the like measurement side. But the other thing is, is we're very interested in trying to create environments that replicate the applications we're interested in. And so A lot of my lab is building tools around bioreactors to create a biofilm that looks like the biofilm we find in vivo and creating systems. And that actually is sort of hearkening all the way back to my graduate school work where we were building bioreactors to replicate fluid mechanics within the cardiovascular system. So I've sort of taken what I learned there and turned it into our bioreactors that we're doing here. And so there's an entire sort of part of my lab that's sort of built around how do we sort of replicate this in vivo environment so we can more rapidly test things. And then the last thing is we have a large sort of animal modeling area, which includes both small and large animal models. 